Welcome back. There's very little good news for farmers in the latest weather forecasts. No rain is likely for at least another 10 days. And this summer's drought has been described as one of the worst since records began. Torben Ankel spoke to the Met Service about the big dry. It's at times like these that the men and women of Med Service, perched high on a hill above Wellington, find the eyes and expectations of the nation on them as we wait for a decent drenching of rain. Predicting what New Zealand's weather will do is of course a complex science and it's up to Med Service's telegenic spokesman. A cooler feel too. Across parts of the North Island, some spots may only see 10, 20 mils of rain. Ex-BBC weatherman Daniel Corbett, to put that science into terms we can all understand. Slowly clears away the decent rain chance as we go towards the course of Tuesday and Wednesday. That's how it's looking for now, but more at medservice.com. So what then has been the primary cause of the heat wave that's blighted farmers and delighted sun lovers over the past two months? We've had a big mountain of air. We've, uh, anyone that's looked at the weather maps have seen big areas of high pressure, anti-cyclones, just sitting over New Zealand and much of the Tasman Sea. And you think of those as well. There have been big mountains of warm air sitting in place. And they, in essence, keep all the other typical weather systems that might come through during the summer away. So we just stay mainly hot and dry. And the cause of that mountain of hot air floating above us? Well, post-holiday mode politicians aside, it seems Australia is partly to blame. Think of the Australian continent. You warm that there, temperatures easily get to well into the 30s, if not 40s. So that's a good source of some warm air. And then when you have a, what we call a long wave up a ridge sitting over the south of Australia and over uh, much of New Zealand, as it has been, that then allows these uh, areas of warm air to come across, create these areas of high pressure, and they're not fast to move away. They just sit in place, almost like a bit of a stubborn ox, sitting in place, giving us the fine weather, but at the same time, keeping all the other weather systems yeah. at bay. We have, of course, in just the last week, seen rain over much of the country. Rain which provided some relief to farmers, but certainly wasn't a drought breaker. The big mountain of warm air that was sitting in place over the course of the summer, the uh, long wave upper ridge and these anticyclones that were keeping us just dry, warm and dry, hot and dry, that has slowly broken down. So it's allowed the, the door to open for more active troughs, some tropical moisture to combine to bring us at least some rain chances. We've seen the one weather system work through. And that is perhaps the first sign. So the anticyclones will still be visiting, but we are surrounded by water. We're midway between the uh, tropics and the poles. And as we go further into the autumnal season, it is just the natural progression of the roaring 40s to bring back the weather system. So further through the autumn, we will get to be, be getting those through and slowly topping our, uh, our rain buckets back up. And if, like me, you're sure you can remember hot, dry summers like this when you were younger, take a look at these graphs showing the average summer rainfall in three centres over the past 50 years. The driest summers, or those with about two-thirds the average, have all been highlighted yellow. There's no obvious pattern, but certainly a few standouts, especially in the early 1980s and mid-70s. As for this year's big dry, well as Med Services Daniel Corbett predicted before, the end should soon be in sight, as autumn kicks in and those Antarctic southerlies start bringing us our annual big chill again. <laughs>